Okay, I'm going to show you how to use bindable events and bindable functions in Roblox. So what is a bindable event? Well, you might have come across a time where you've wanted to share some information between a script. Perhaps you have a function which you want to call from another script, but because that function was not declared in the same script, you cannot run it directly from your other script. Let me give you an example. So if we create a function to delete the base plate, okay, and in that function, we do indeed decide to delete the base plate. What if I wanted to call this function from another script? Now, there's not really any point in doing that because you could just delete the base plate from another script. But let's imagine you have some code <clears throat> which you only have in one script, which you want to call from another script. So I've got my main script, I've got my other script, and in my main script, I've got the delete base plate function. How do I call this function from another script? Okay, well, I'm gonna show you how to do it. So you'll use a bindable event. And a bindable event is essentially an object which you can use to trigger some kind of action in another script. You can call it from one script, and then you can have a listener set up in another script to listen out for it, and then you can call a function from that other script. So essentially, it's one script telling another script to run some code or run a particular function that exists in that other script. So here we go. I'm in my other script, and I want to call the delete base plate function, but the delete base plate function is in the main script. So we're going to create a bindable event in the main script, and we're going to call it delete base plate. You can call it whatever you like. It doesn't have to correspond to the function's name in any way at all. And then we'll just say game dot server script service dot main script dot delete base plate fire colon fire. Okay. And then in the main script we'll say script dot delete base plate dot event connect function. Okay, like this. And I, I suppose it's probably best to put this in a wait for child just to make sure the event gets created. And then inside of there, we can say delete base plate, or even we could just say delete base plate like this. So let's just do a task.wait of two seconds so we can actually see this change. And if we click on play, you will notice that after two seconds, the base plate gets destroyed. Even though we didn't run the function directly from the main script, we merely set up an event listener, which would listen out for when the delete base plate is fired, and it would fire the function when that event does get fired. And then it's from the other script where we fired the bindable event. So that is how it works. That's it. Now, what's the difference between a bindable event and a bindable function? Well, this is where it starts to get interesting because... I've not really shown you any practical examples of where a bindable event would be used just yet, but one in particular would be if you had a data store script. Okay, we'll just call this data store. And let's imagine when a player joins the game, you'll load their data store into a global table. Okay, so you might have, you know, if Alvin Blocks is in the game, then I'll have a table with my data file where you can make any changes. You could make changes to the amount of cash that I've got. You could make changes to the amount of, you know, items. If I place down an item, you'll want to update this table. Now, let's say that I have another script, which is, it's got the task of handling item placement. Okay, so when I place down an item in this script, I now need to update my data file but the data files are handled in the data store script because it's in this table. So how can I, from this placement script, how can I send some kind of request to add this new item that I've just placed down into my data file without having to use the data store service to load my data store again because my data file is probably already open, it's already open in this data store script. So I can't access it from another script because then we run the risk of overwriting my data. So what we can do is we can use a bindable event. And so it would be as simple as saying, if we just change the name of this to place item, for example, we could say game.servicescriptservice.datastore.placeitem fire. And I could pass some information such as the item name, uh, such as table, and perhaps I could also pass its position if I wanted to. 
and then we could in our data source script we could set up a listener for that very event and we would take the item name we take the item position and we could say table.insert we would also want to you know pass the player um, but we'll just assume that we know that it's Alvin blocks in this example so we could say data stores Alvin blocks and we could insert into the items table this new table and we could say the name equals name position equals position just like so and then we could print out the data stores table and if we just have a look at this in action you'll see where I'm going with this in a second um, with the bindable functions which we'll get onto just give me a pass.wait there so we can actually see the changes and after two seconds you'll notice that in the items table we now have that item listed there so that is a practical example so where do the bindable functions come in well bindable functions they do the exact same thing as bindable events except they also allow you to then return some kind of value or message back to the original script you called it from so let's say for example this didn't go wrong maybe it went wrong sorry maybe it didn't go right something happened i couldn't insert it into the table some kind of error occurred maybe we couldn't find the data file maybe the data stores were down i don't know well how do we tell the placement script that something went wrong so that we could potentially show a message to our player or prevent the item from being placed because it couldn't go into our data file well that's where the bindable function comes in and the bindable function it's a callback which means it's always going to the, the purpose of it is to send some information back to where you called it from so let's turn this into a bindable function and we'll call it place item we'll just remove the bindable event well since this is now a bindable function and it's a callback we have to call it a little differently so rather than saying fire we will say invoke okay and since we're expecting some kind of value to be returned, we're going to create a variable. I'm going to call it something different than return. We'll just call it value. This is going to be the value that gets returned back to our placement script from the data store script. So we're going to keep the parameters that we gave. And in the data store script, we also need to change this dot event. It's going to be dot on invoke. And we're no longer connecting it to a function we are giving it a callback function. So it just becomes on invoke equals function, which means we no longer need this closing bracket. Okay. So now we will need to return a value. So we'll just return true because everything seems to have gone well. And then this value will be true because it's what we've returned. So if I was to return a string, for example, that said hello, then our value would be hello. And if I was to print out hello, sorry, if it was to print out value, it would be hello, as you can see. So there's not, there's not really a practical use for a bindable function in this case, because we know it's going to insert into the table. Uh, I'm trying to think of, of where it would be useful here. Maybe if the player was buying an item, right, and, and we checked to see if they could afford it, then you could say, if can afford item, or if you can't afford the item, then you might want to return false, or you might want to return cannot afford, okay? And then you could check to see if the value was cannot afford, and if it was cannot afford, you'd probably want to delete the item. What you need to know here is that a bindable function will let you return some kind of value or message to the original script. So you, from your placement scripts, will be able to know if the operation that you're trying to conduct in this function was successful or not. Okay, that's the basis of it. Um, so it's allowing you two way communication, really, you, you can send that message from the placement script to another script, you can you can signal some kind of code to be to, to start running in another script. But not only that, because what I've just outlined is what you can do in a bindable event, you can trigger some code in another script, you can trigger a function in another script, using a bindable event, but with a bindable function, you can do the exact same thing, but return something back. Perhaps you're expecting something from your bindable function. You know, you could even request an asset, right? We could, 
we could create a new instance, right? We could create a new part or a new folder in the workspace and we could return it. And then in the placement script, we could uh, actually do things with, with that value. So we could say value dot, uh, well, we'll just print out the name, right? We'll print out the name and then you'll see what happens. So the folder has been has been created in the data store script and we've returned it, which means we now have a reference to that folder that we've just created despite not having created it in this placement script because we created it in the data store script and we've just returned it. So that's that's it really. Bindable event allows you to trigger code in a different script. Bindable function allows you to trigger code and also send back some data, whether that's an object, a number, string, whatever, or even a true or false value just to say everything went well, that's it. Only other key difference is a bindable function will yield. So the code in my placement script will pause until something is returned from the bindable function. Now, I think there is some kind of timeout. If a value doesn't get returned after X amount of seconds, it might carry on. You might need to quote me on that, but it's one of those things which you probably don't really need to worry about, okay? But bindable functions, they yield. So if I was to do a task.wait of three seconds here, and we had some code underneath, watch what would happen. I click on play, the bindable event has fired, but the code underneath it is not running until that value gets returned from the on invoke function. So I hope that video was useful. Uh, one other thing to note is that bindables can only work in the environment that they are set up in, for example, you can't have server client here. If you if you have a bindable event on the server, it will only be able to be called and listened to on the server. If you have a bindable event set up on the client, then you can't call it from the server, right? That's where remote events, remote functions come in. I'll do another video on those in the future. Essentially the same thing, except instead of calling it from the server to the server or the client to the client, it's the client calling the remote event or the remote function between the server and back and forth. Okay, so we'll do another video on that, but this is all you need to know about bindables. Um, I hope they're useful. And like I say, they work just the same on the client, although you'd be using them between two client scripts. So thanks for watching. Let me know if you enjoyed the video. Please subscribe if you find it useful. Let me know if there's any other videos you'd like to see, and I'll catch you in the next one.